been in youth ministry since around 1980, so that's about 28 years. My full-time job is I'm a registered nurse, and right now I currently work in the cardiac rehab department of Baptist Hospital. And then I also um, volunteer at my church in uh, the capacity as a youth leader. The, the roles of a small church volunteer youth minister can go from one extreme to the other. I've been the cook, the nurse, the counselor, clean the room, chaperone the parties, plan the parties. You know, I'm in charge of budget. I oftentimes am the one who has to go pick out the t-shirts. That's probably one of my most least favorite jobs is picking out the Fraslin t-shirts. You get to celebrate with them and then you get to be there in the trenches with them when things are not going well with these kids. And of course, we have helpers that come in and out and I've had great helpers through the years. But pretty much the responsibility has, has fallen on, on my shoulders, which is, has been something that I have enjoyed and I have loved. But um, that's what I do when I'm not working. A few years ago, our church went through a time where we were really struggling with um, what, what probably some people would call legalism. Now the effect that that had on our youth ministry from my perspective, was, was devastating. Um, at this particular time, our, our youth group had kind of dwindled down to where we just had a few. And to be honest, they were joyless. They uh, were struggling under the weight of a religion, but really had not a lot of joy. Um, that tension and that stress, I think, translated to our children. We had Jaylen was uh, going to a counselor because she was depressed. She was struggling so much in her relationships, partly because she wanted to do these things, and we were saying, um, you can do those, but you have to act a certain way, and you can't do this because that would look bad. What I was seeing in my teenagers, coupled with what was happening in my own home, with my own children and my own husband, um, I began to pull together a lesson one Wednesday night about grace and freedom from the law. And when I started to teach it to my kids that Wednesday night, it was like a rebellion. It was a rebellion in my heart, but it was like I was drawing a line in the sand and I was going over it. And I was taking our youth group with us. And especially, I wanted to take my children. And to be honest, I think um, as I was teaching, and I was teaching to the class, it wasn't a big class that night, but I was really teaching it to Jaylen, and I was really teaching it to Casey. And, um, and they got it, they really did. And um, we drove home that night feeling um, so good because it was like, we have turned a corner. Um, that was Wednesday. The very next day, our daughter and two of her friends, Alicia and Taylor, were all three killed in a car accident as they had pulled across a busy highway. An 18-wheeler had come by and had hit their car and had killed all three of them instantly. As we began to deal with the devastation of that moment, and as we began to live in the nightmare that that moment brought into our home, you know, I, I just, uh, youth ministry was the last thing on my mind. I really pretty much went into a survival mode and um, just focused it from, from that moment on of um, trying to live. I think often of that night, just less than 24 hours before, when I had taught that very passionate, very heartfelt lesson uh, for me, but to my kids, and especially to Jaylen, that I'm able to introduce to her and reaffirm to her the concept of wonderful, freeing, uh, refreshing grace right before she goes out into eternity to meet face to face to the one who gave it in the first place. As we begin to heal and as time passed, um, probably about two years, and I began to watch our youth ministry in our church. I watched them struggle. We still had no, um, you know, we didn't have any staff. And so I began um, to start working back again. And once I, I was there, it was like I was home. It was where I needed to be. It was where I feel like I'm called to be. It's like I can't stay away 
from the youth room. Does that mean why, or is that regardless of whether I'm in active on the team, regardless of whether I'm teaching in the class, I will always, always be an advocate for that, that teenage group in our church. I will never give up on our teenagers.